Linda with Moonwise Herbs and we are here with Chris at the Rice Shack and she's going to process our rice for us and she's going to tell us how she does it. Hi Chris. Hello. We'll put your rice in one of the parchers where we'll heat it slowly until all of the steam is gone and the hulls are nice and crispy. It moves very slowly. It just stirs the paddles Then we'll take and put it in the thrasher. On this one, instead of bare metal walls with heat underneath it, is padded with carpeting. The paddles are padded with old fire hose. And there's a gap between the wall and the paddles that rubs the rice against itself and pulls the hulls off that way. Okay. We push air through the lid and push the hulls out to save us from trying to fan it out all the time. Mm -hmm. Then when it's done, we put it in the fanning mill here and clean it up. It's an old green fanning mill. Every farmer had one because if they fed grain to their animals, you had to make it dust free or you made them sick. Sure. Um, <clears throat> still working, about 100 years old, modified. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very modified, <laughs> but we'll push it out there where that mound of chaff and the windsock is and let it rip and it jiggles. The screens jiggle from front to back and from side to side Okay. in the process so that the grains fall through and this barrel on this end has paddles and creates wind that blows over the bottom screen blows the hulls and the dust out of there. Oh, nice. And then we'll bag it up and we'll put it in our vaults to keep it safe until you come pick it up. Okay. That's it. And how long does the whole process take? It can take anywhere from about an hour, hour and a half okay. per batch. Okay. And you said that that's depending on the rice? That De depending on how well dried. Every, every lake is different. Um, the thrasher here can take anywhere from 5 minutes to 35 minutes, depending on how tight and thick the hull is. Because that rice, over many millennium, has evolved to survive in that body of water. So if it's got a lot of current or it's got a lot of wind going through, it's going to have a thicker, tighter hull to hang onto the green. Amazing. Lakes and uh, flowages that are in a bowl where they're sheltered from the wind, where they don't have much current, will have big, thin, loose hulls. Mm -hmm. And those will come off. And they don't need as much protection. You got it. Nice. Yeah, those plants did. They're smart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how long have you been doing this? My father and his best friend Ray started this back in the early 70s. Okay. Um, because their processor passed away and nobody in the family took it over, so they had to learn how themselves. Mm -hmm. They made most of this equipment. I was going to ask you about yeah. it, yeah. Except for this. Okay. That was a find. Uh huh. Um, after Dad had his first heart attack, I started helping out. And as he got more ill, I took over more and more. When Ray got sick, Paul, his son, uh, youngest son, started helping too. And since we grew up across the river from each other, he's more like my little brother than anything else anyway. Okay. So uh, he inherited his half and I inherited my half mm -hmm. from, our par from our fathers. Uh, I would say I've been doing this for well over 20 years. Oh, wow. Same with Paul. Okay. A few years shy of that. The vaults are dead refrigerators. They're not going by any means. But they have, everybody's got their own rice back. We keep very good track of that. We do a little trade too. <laughs> but you can see all the different kinds, how dark some are, how light some are. And the smell. Mmm, yeah. <laughs> Smells like rice. So, that's where we keep it until you come and get it. What keeps you going with this? Um, the people. The people. Uh -huh. Um, 
it's not only fun to do mm -hmm. for somebody. Uh, the great smell when that first kettle goes off in the morning. It smells like this. Right. Well, this smell is all day amazing. Long. All day long. <laughs> Got to find a chemist who turns this into perfume, and they'll make a killing up here. <laughs> they'll make a killing. So you really enjoy interacting yeah. with the people, and you're maintaining a tradition. That too. That's really you know. But ricers are generally nice people. Mm -hmm. Every walk of life. Sure. From the hermit to the CEO and everything in between, uh -huh. you know, <laughs> once they get hooked on the real thing. Right. <laughs> well, I had only, it's an addiction. I had only had patty rice and I thought, what is oh, the big deal? Thing. I know, I couldn't stand <laughs> oh, you poor thing. I, couldn't, I thought wild rice was horrible and then I had this and that. <laughs> so, hooked for yeah, life. Exactly. Exactly. Nice. Yeah. Let's take a look over here. Oh, the encyclopedia. What do we have here? Okay. Every lake processes differently. Uh, we can tell the characteristics by the size and shape of the hulls, how long the beards are, how thick the hulls are, the size of the grain. Now the rice you brought us today we've never done before, so we're going to have to compare it to this one to get some idea of how long to thrash it, how long it's going to take the thrash out. So you'll look at it and compare, compare. it? Compare, okay. yeah, take one out and look at it, take it apart, that sort okay. of thing. Nice. But, um, Every lake is different. You've got itty bitty stuff like this from the mesh coral, which there's grass seed that's bigger than that, I swear. <laughs> um, Togetic, our bear, towards Togetic. Here you go. When you look at the size of the Togetic in comparison, mm. the big fat grains mm -hmm. in comparison to the mm. little mesh coral. Huh. And they taste different. People swear it they taste different. Mm -hmm. And they grow up used to tasting the one that they picked near the home. Somebody, they taste somebody else's, they don't like it or they like it better, so then they go get from that lake or they don't or whatever, you know. There are people who can tell the difference between the taste of the lake. I, I just eat it because it's good. You didn't like it all? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't like it all. <laughs> Do you harvest at all? <clears throat> Once or twice a year we can get out. Mm -hmm. Usually very early in the season. Right. Uh, otherwise, we're here seven days a week. You're too busy, yeah. Um, How much rice do you think you process here every year, in a good year? We stop counting after a couple of tons. Uh-huh. A couple <laughs> of tons? We stop counting, for sanity's sake. Wow. <laughs> so it's a lot. Don't want, you figure that between lifting it into the kettle and out, and into the thresher and out, and into the fanning mill and out, into the refrigerator and out, and storing it when in a good year where we get to store it off site over in the barn or whatever mm -hmm. you go out and get it well you figure it's about nine times that you lift every single pound uh -huh. you don't want to know that you've lifted more than two or three tons <laughs> are there any or you would never do it again <laughs> again right are there any young people that are maybe gonna help you or, or um, looking to step into this eventually uh, a couple of nephews have you know said, yeah, I'd be interested in a little while, but they're starting families. Hmm. It's going to be a couple decades before they get tired of the city and they want to move back to the country or whatever. You know? Right, right. So, just hanging in there. Mm -hmm. Waiting for the next crop to grow up and, and mature. Be ready. <laughs> well, thank you so much. All right. So we got our rice back from the processor and we cooked up a nice bowl. Ooh, wild rice for breakfast. A little bit of our homemade maple syrup on it. And some black walnuts. Yum, black walnuts on our rice. Yum. I hope you have fun harvesting rice too.